Hello, welcome to another Mr. Keat on location. Today I've come to the site of Castle Acre in Norfolk, one of the greatest Motton Bailey castles in the country. Imagine now that you are an Anglo-Saxon peasant. Your family for generations has been, have been farming the surrounding countryside and now you're forced to come and pay homage to the local Norman Baron, William de Warren, who was given this land, this castle, by William the Conqueror, the victor at the Battle of Hastings, the person who's killed your king, King Harold Godwinson. He's been given this land to pacify the surrounding area, and as a result, you are forced as a peasant to come and give your offering, to submit your tithe, your taxes, before the local lord in his castle. <laughs> Imagine now that you are no longer an Anglo-Saxon peasant, but you are a Norman foot soldier, a Norman guardsman sent here from Normandy to come and keep watch and guard in this castle, keeping an eye on the local Anglo-Saxon population and watching them day after day and night after night. You've heard that in the south near Ely, a man called Hereward the Wake has ravaged the local Norman army and has established for himself a base there, a stronghold from which he can branch out and reach the local countryside. You have got to be there to stop that and you've got to make sure that the local nuns and monks of Anglo-Saxon origin aren't putting up any rebellion also. Come with me now into the mot of the castle. So this was the place where people lived out their everyday life inside the safety, security, by the huge fortification that's behind us. Underneath these earthworks here, you've got remnants of the town, the small village that was here 1,000 years ago during the Norman settlement of England, surrounded by huge earthwork walls that were built by the Anglo-Saxon inhabitants who were made to construct this castle. <laughs> to the top of the mot and if you look down into the ditch here below you can see the amount of earth that's been dug out by Anglo-Saxon slaves working for the Normans about a thousand years ago. So while this time of conquest was going on there was also lots of cultural exchange. You've got an Anglo-Saxon settlement here where a Norman castle was being built and the land at the time was given to a Norman lord by William the Conqueror to try and pacify and settle this area. <laughs> You see, the Anglo-Saxons had already built existing defences at Castle Acre as part of their network of burrs that were to defend the Anglo-Saxon kingdoms against Viking invasion before 1066. But what the Normans did after the Battle of Hastings, travelling around the country, consolidating their power, is they took their own form of castle and in an act of supremacy, they built theirs on top of the Anglo-Saxon pre-existing foundations. had a method of building a castle which was quick, cheap and easy to do. They travelled around the country consolidating their power using Anglo-Saxon slaves to put together earthworks on the top of which you would have a keep mostly made out of wood in William the Conqueror's reign but later upgraded to stone and then around that people would flock to the castle for protection and for the marketplace and trading which it would afford and you'll get a town that formed which was called the Bailey and also became a fortified settlement. Castle Bailey soon became shining beacons of stability in a tumultuous kingdom, and people would flock there for security and stability in a tumultuous kingdom in a difficult time. From the year 1066, when William the Conqueror built his first castle in Pevensey, to the year 1100, over 80 castles were built by the Norman conquerors, from Exeter to Warwick, from Nottingham to York, from Lincoln to Huntingdon. All over the kingdom, these castles were built with a similar purpose in mind. And to find out what that purpose was, we're going to have to consult some primary sources. To analyse the impact that castles such as Castle Acre had 
on England following the Norman Conquest, we've got to turn to the written accounts. And one of the best written accounts we have about the Norman Conquest is actually from the Anglo-Saxon point of view. In front of me is a copy of the Anglo-Saxon Chronicle, which is a compilation of monastic accounts written during the Norman Conquest. And we're going to turn to the chapter of 1087, the year that William the Conqueror died. Now, during this chapter, the monk tells us what William the Conqueror did during his reign. Let's have a look and let's see what he talks about. He said he had castles made and oppressed poor men. The king was very hard and took of his underlings many marks of gold and many more hundred pounds of silver that he took by weight unjustly from his people for little need. And what this tells us is that castles were in fact bound up with the administrative machinery of state as well as being a symbol of aristocratic power and royal authority. There were the places where taxes were collected and money was made for the government, this new French government of England. We're going to cast aside the Anglo-Saxon Chronicle now in favour of another ancient scroll which comes in the form of my history notebook. And this is particularly interesting to the historian because it's written by another monk, a monk called Orderic Vitalis, writing in England, a contemporary of William the Conqueror. But this monk had mixed parentage. His father was Norman, whereas his mother was English. And that should give us a slightly different perspective, or perhaps a more balanced perspective, potentially, on the Norman Conquest. Orderic Vitalis writes about the purpose of castles as being a means to control rebellion in England. There's one example where Idric the Wild rebels in East Anglia and Orderic Vitalis writes about this rebellion that it was crushed and it was crushed because the English scarcely know, knew about castles in that region and they could only put up a weak resistance to their enemies. He goes on to say that William the Conqueror's army throughout um, the, the 20 years or so of his reign built castles far and wide throughout the land as a means of conquest. The castle was to serve as a guarantor of security in a country where the king would often have to travel back to his homeland in Normandy to ensure security there as well. They would be tools of punishment for the Anglo-Saxon population, but they would also prove to be tools of prosperity. Over three quarters of the towns founded between 1066 and 1150 in England all had adjoining castles. All in all, they were to be a significant feature of the Norman Conquest and England's history for years to come. What I hope you can also see from these huge domineering earthworks is just how huge a deal a castle was in the daily life of people here living in the Middle Ages. This was the place that you were afraid of, but it was also the place where you got your security in living from. It was the place that fostered trade as communities, especially minority communities, moved around it for safety. And it was also the place where you went to pay your taxes, the place where you paid your feudal dues, your feudal earnings to the lord, the local lord of the manor. So having that importance in everyday life meant that it was certainly something that can't be ignored as we study the Middle Ages. of today was to help mum know the difference between a mop and bailey. So mum, do you know the difference between a mop and bailey now? Oh no, I wasn't really listening. Oh. Sorry.